So to kick us off this week, I want to go around the room real quick. Has anyone really had like a terrible waste of points experience ever, like with their DVC membership? Like just something where it's like, I would never do that ever again. Like never wanted to do a redo on that stay or something. You no. mean other other than staying at Bay Lake Tower? No. <laughs> Yeah, Bay Lake Tower was the most disappointing studio I've ever seen. Stan. It is. And it continues yeah. to take the cake until it gets its refurbishment here. And I uh, love Bay Lake. I do too. I, know, I love the location. Bay. I just think it could be you, so much. You love the location. You don't love Bay Lake. There's no way that you walk into that studio and say, oh, I love it. <laughs> you love the location. It's okay. But it's the location. That's okay. Exactly. Some of us don't stay in studios, Derek. We're bougie and only stay in one bedrooms or higher. So... <laughs> And the one bedroom and two bedrooms at Bay Lake are awesome. This explains why your point broke all the time. 100%. <laughs> I don't think we've ever stayed somewhere that I was like, nope, never again. But speaking of wasting points, I'm still very sad that we lost like what? two. Two? I think two. it was four. No, it was two. We lost two points. <gasps> yeah, two points I down. When our use year expired. lost four. Uh, yeah. Most that that's six points we could have stayed at hilton head for one night in january it's a whole night of points <gasps> if only we could pull our points that way you know if only could have got grand villa and hilton head in january for six points it would have been perfect Everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I'm your host Paul Krieger, and I'm joined this week by my wife Amy Krieger. We've got John Sakari, aka Big Fat Panda, with us. Welcome home, Senior Sales Associate for the DVC Resale Market, Derek DeBoer. Hey now, and <laughs> the one, the only Jeff, Jeff Haslam. Jeff changed his shirt too. He did. Everyone else is getting what? in on the what change is the up shirt with game. This? And I couldn't do this show in my Hilton Head show shirt. Hilton Head shirt. <laughs> Never mind. Hilton Head show shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, say that three times fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I just before I get too far off the rails, Panda, are you wearing a Park Candy shirt? I think this is a Roosevelt's. No, no, no. It could oh. be a Park Candy. No, you know what? Let's find out. <laughs> it is. It is Park Candy. Okay. I love that. That's what my my Hawaiian make, one is. They make really good shirts. I like mm -hmm. them. Yeah. I'll have to check them out. I've never. Yeah. Derek will check them out too. He buys he buys three shirts specialty for each one of these shows. So. I just said, I literally told Amy right before we started filming, I go, I think this is like my first redo in a really long time. It's my old Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville shirt. So I wasn't sure how it fit in with oh. the theming of everything, but I think I'm officially <laughs> tapped out. I'm tapped out of shirts. Put in the comments below what show Derek wore that shirt on previously, and he'll send you the shirt off of his back. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you a bucket hat. Yeah, there hat. it is. <laughs> We're at Moonlight Magic recently, and people keep coming up to us. And every time, I don't think Derek said hello at first. It just looks really strange. He's like back in the back shadows <laughs> and he's like digging in his backpack. And then he finally comes, oh, hey, we got bucket hats. And it's like, that was the introduction. But like the five seconds before, it's very questionable as to what Derek's trying to do with his backpack. Amy told people, Amy said, if you happen to see us and see Derek, he may have a special prize for you. So I did. their prize is not meeting me. Their prize is, hey, where's that special prize that Amy said you have for me? <laughs> Well, is it special? Is it a special prize if you're handing out sixty-two of them? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're still special. He, you're you, you got rid of every team. single one of them. I mean, he stuffed he a lot in his backpack. I threatened, Poor guy. <laughs> I threatened to put to bring a sign and hold it up behind Derek the whole night that said Moonlight Magic merch because <laughs> you know DVC doesn't put out any D Mer Moonlight Magic merch. So I mean, someone someone's ought to do it. But hey, that, that, that was the most. I've had in a long time and being able to be with you guys and being able to meet so many awesome families that yes. came up to us and it was yeah. just it was incredible so it just it it was awesome it was great yep. it was each experience was really to meet fun. someone is is amazing and we do have so many people that come up to us and they say that you know they they're scared to interrupt what we're doing or they're scared to say hello please we would love to to meet you chat with you and um you know it, it just means the world to us amy and i 
Um, and Derek, you get this too, you know, uh, more so than, you know, Panda and Jeff get to experience it but because of our jobs. We get people on the phone all the time or via email mm-hmm. and it's amazing all of the messages and and the kind words that come through and, and the conversations we get to have. And some, some of those we've gotten to actually put, you know, voices to faces over the years mm-hmm. um, and gotten to meet some of them after talking to them on the phone or, or something. And Derek, you've, you've done this much longer than we have. So you've, you, you've got plenty of those stories as well, but um, no. love, love meeting people. And uh, thank you guys for making Moonlight Magic special. Thank you, you guys that are on this show um, for, for uh, having us along with you and, and, and for us all being able to go together. That was an awesome experience and we look forward to doing it again real soon, but uh, yeah, thankfully to- they don't have my phone number yet, but I have to say that was the most expensive Moonlight Magic I've ever been to. Because Panda made you and I buy new cameras. Oh, that is very true. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna see a lot of a lot of similar camera content coming out of Panda, Jeff, and I's uh, videos in the in the very near future. We all now have the same exact camera, and I think we need to go to Panda's house for like a tutorial class on how to use for it. For real. Um, but uh, I've yeah. been watching YouTube videos, so I can I can impart that onto you as well. Perfect. Yep. It'll be good because I had the camera most of Moonlight Magic and my camera skills are so bad, so oh, shaky. You, you did a video. great job. And you did this great. thing has, Im- what, stabilization, so. <laughs> well, and I said this too before I think we started filming today at one point. I said it was so much more fun for me editing that Moonlight Magic video because normally like I'm filming and doing it. So I kind of know, I know the flow. I know what's going to happen. And in this video, like, I had absolutely no clue. So when I got to the part when Jeff Haslam and uh, and Amy are drumming, and then Panda comes through dancing, I'm I'm dead. I'm dying. Like it was, it was just so cool. To... Oh, you weren't there for the live version of that? No, no I was, was not. I I don't know where. Oh. I think I was like over with Jeff and Dan talking about God knows what. But it yeah, I was not there for like the live dance and like it was just. For me, it was fun to be able to step back for a second and like watch these videos through the through the eyes of a viewer. Um, just just to be clear, right before the dance, uh, Jeff gives me some. I don't even know what it was, but it had a rum floater on the top, and I think I just drank all the rum and it went to my head. So I was <laughs> I was feeling no pain. I was very confident that whatever dance I did was going to be like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> and it was Cirque yeah, du Soleil. Yeah. <laughs> so if you've not checked out that video, make sure you check it out. And we also have what I what I've dubbed Panda's cut uh, of the Moonlight Magic experience over on patreon.com slash DVC fan. Uh, so definitely head over there as well. And we've got a fun video coming up. Well, at the point of this show going up, it came up two weeks ago. So go oh. back in time two weeks and watch uh, watch Jeff Haslam's experience at Moonlight Magic two days later at Epcot where he went there with a bunch of our DVC fam moderators and some other friends and got to snack around uh, the World Showcase for Flower and Garden because the snack coupons for Moonlight Magic were able for that. And that was a, that was a great time, right, Jeff? Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Animal Kingdom, everybody had leftover snack coupons. Epcot, everybody used it at the first booth. So that tells you the difference and yeah. how yeah. that tracked. Yep, yep. <laughs> But uh, enough chit chat. We're here to talk business, and this week's business is talking about. And I'm gonna I'm gonna botch it just like I did when we <laughs> when we first started talking about. But we're talking about the easiest and the most difficult rooms to book at each Disney Vacation Club resort. And um, this was a topic that you came up with, right? Yeah, I just a lot of times we'll see people in the DVC fan Facebook group or wherever just asking, you know, if I were to try to book this resort at seven months out or I need to set a wait list for it, what is my best chance of getting a room? So so basically, like, what are the easiest rooms to get? What is what has the most inventory? Um, Or even like some people will try to get a room and be like, well, where did it go? Why, Why didn't I get it? And so just understanding what are the really difficult rooms to book also at each resort? What are the easiest to book? And then maybe some general tips for for booking, you know, trying to get what you want. Before we dive into it, though, this and all of our content here on DVC Fan is brought to you by the world of DVC. DVC Resale Market, if you're looking to buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract, they can do that. Monera Financial, they can help with that DVC resale contract purchase by some amazing financing options and the DVC Rental Store where you can try before you buy. 
rent some, you guys are terrible at this today, uh, <laughs> rent some points um, or rent out your own points. But please show some love for our sponsors at the World of DVC who allow us to goof off like this um, several times a month. So, but we are talking easiest, hardest rooms to book. And you kind of came up with a, a list of kind of just some general tips for us to kind of start the conversation off before we kind of look at each specific Disney Vacation Club resort. Yeah. Actually, can you bring them over closer where I can oh, sure. see what yeah, I wrote? I'll bring, them, I'll bring them over here for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh uh, no. actually, oh. over there is fine. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so the first one you said, one bedrooms are the easiest category to book. Yeah. So basically, obviously, studios usually go first. Uh, and that's because, you know, they're the cheapest. And compared to a one bedroom, some studios can even sleep uh, more capacity wise. So a lot of families who are looking to kind of maximize their points are going to go to studios first. Uh, and that leaves the the one bedrooms uh, just just a little bit easier to book because they cost more points. Um, sometimes you can only stay like four or five people, the same amount as most studios. Um, so my first tip is if you can make the points work for you, if you have enough points to splurge, um, go for a one bedroom at harder to book places. So this is going to be helpful to you at somewhere like Beach Club or Grand Cal, uh, where if you don't own there, a studio is going to be really hard to get. Um, so that's that's my first I, one. I feel like all of us to start off with Disney Vacation Club, everyone goes into it saying I'm going to book studios because it's the cheapest and the easiest. You know, we are all <laughs> we are all point misers at heart. But then you get the first one bedroom experience and you're like Panda Panda's like, yep, been there, <laughs> I don't done have that. enough points. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Like it's like you 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 walked into that Riviera one bedroom probably and you're like, yep, I'm in love. That's it. That's exactly it. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's what most people do. But uh, you know, to to Amy's point, the the one bedrooms don't get eaten up as fast in terms of the availability, especially within the seven to eleven month window, or even in the zero to seven month window. Which is how we were able to stay at Hilton Head is that we yeah. we did a one bedroom, so studios were gone. <laughs> yep. So definitely, studios are the hardest, and one bedrooms tend to be uh, the easiest. Um, you, you mentioned Grand Villas here a little bit. You know, Grand Villas are kind of hit or miss, I feel like, depending on season. and. Yeah, I Grand Villas to me, well, I, I, I mentioned Grand Villas is one of the hardest to book. And that's because inventory on Grand Villas is pretty low, um, especially if you look at like Grand Cal has like, what, two Grand Villas? Uh, the Disneyland, the new Disneyland Villas has two Grand Villas. Yep. Um, you know, Grand Floridian, there's only one on each floor. And they, they might even still be using one as an open house. Yeah, I think the first floor. So still. that, yeah. So that leaves out, you know, there's there's not very many Grand Villas at the resorts. There's just a handful. Um, you know, some have more like Saratoga has a little bit more and Old Key West. But those in studios are actually going to be some of the hardest, um, hardest to book. Uh, the lower the point costs of the room, the harder it is usually to get. Yeah, this is Derek's. Derek preaches this, I feel like, constantly. <laughs> I, I, I preach it, and I know we're going to go through like resort by resort, but when people ask me and say, and Amy, that's why your list was was so perfect, people always ask me, like, what's the hardest rooms to get? I go, the smallest rooms with the worst views. <laughs> Those are always going to be the hardest rooms to get. So you're going to see when we're looking at rooms that have a regular option versus say a preferred view or a standard option, the standard ones are the ones that are going to go. A place like Animal Kingdom, right? A value room. Those are going to go. So yeah, the smaller the rooms with the worst views because people want to stretch their points out and people say it, which I'm the complete opposite. I love a good balcony. So Get me. I won't like to stay at the boardwalk unless I have a boardwalk view, because to me that's part of the reason for staying there. But other people are like, "Dude, I was I booked that thing, that parking lot view at you know eleven months on the dot, and I was able to get that standard view parking lot view." So, to each his own. But yeah, definitely, the more you can stretch your points out, the happier most people seem to be. Jeff Panda. Which camp do you guys find yourselves falling into when it comes to this? Oh, well, you... Jeff's bougie one bedroom book. <laughs> oh, well, well, Amy just yeah. threw you under the bus, so we'll come she back did, to that. We'll she let does you... that at least once a week. Amy's uh -huh. always throwing me under the bus. <laughs> Jeff's like, well, what I, I do 
Well, for the cheapest, I go for the lowest points if I can, and the worst view. I just don't seem to care too much. It matters on who I'm going with and what I'm, what my trip is about. But if and I'm that, going like like a party or a a park basically and just stay overnight, I don't. And that that has definitely changed since we moved here. When when we were traveling here, it was always we were bringing kids, grandkids, friends. So we bought points with the mindset that it was going to be probably a two bedroom when we came and, and fewer trips. Now that we're here, I'm like, I'm not using these points. I booked a grand villa at Old Key West this Sunday just for the hell of it. So, um, <laughs> and I don't you're know, inviting all of us, changed. right? And we're, we're yeah, doing everybody everybody's welcome invite. to come. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> Sunday, it's Sunday. When were you going to tell us? <laughs> right now. <laughs> it was somewhere where, around where you mentioned chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next on uh, on your list here, Amy, it says high point seasons at Disney World are easier to book than low point seasons. Right, and that's that's actually the same with any any yep. resort. So, but but high points at Disney World season means something different. And we talked about this during the Hilton Head show, right? High points at Hilton Head is uh, July and August, yep. whereas the low points is December in January. Uh, but at Disney World, the higher points are going to be like in the summer um october to december yeah yeah well those are the low points yeah october and december are lower uh at disney world so so the higher points are always a little easier to get um so for example when we got grand cow at the seven month window before we owned there um it was much easier for us to get a stay in august than it would be to try to get a stay in like yeah. september october the halloween season is very popular there mm -hmm. uh so just keep that in mind that if you're willing to be a little flexible with the season and being a little flexible with your dates, then you're going to have a greater opportunity of getting what you're looking for. And we get questions about this very frequently, but Disney does, one of the reasons why we monitor point charts year after year is they do have the ability to kind of reallocate these a little bit. And so what we have seen a little bit of a shift towards is, you know, that, that summer season at Disney World is kind of calming down a little bit in terms of popularity and the popularity is increasing in that in that winter season. So July or basically September through the end of the year has been getting very busy. And so we've seen subtle shifts recently on the point charts in which the point charts in that season are kind of starting to creep up a little bit because Disney is also monitoring that. And that's how they control some of this. That's how they really monitor and control availability is by those subtle movements. Um, so it's always something to that pay close attention to like they uh they've done some crazy stuff over the years some of it not legal and some of it they've had to redo when it comes to point charts but um you know that's that's one of the reasons that they do <clears throat> monitor that and change that point chart year after year um speaking of um point charts um off season at beach hotels are easier to book than busy season you kind of covered that a little mm -hmm. bit you know we we talked about vero beach hilton head you know that that time of the year when everyone's on vacation is always a little bit popular uh cheaper point rooms generally book first of course yep you know the as derek said the worst views normally go first because they're the cheapest and uh and that's i have to like for example my points are already gone which they always are almost immediately as soon as i get them meaning i've already borrowed all them for next year for this year's trips because i wound up not having with a son in college now at florida state we had to kind of change based on when he's on vacation so our annual trip to vero that we used to get and milk you know three four nights before christmas we, did, we couldn't do that this year. So we had to go between Christmas and New Year's, which almost doubled the points. Mm -hmm. yeah. get. And then on spring break, we're going to the Grand, I think in a week and a half, the Grand Floridian just for two nights. But it happened to be over spring break on a Friday and a Saturday night. So all my yeah. points are like, poof, they're gone. all gone. gone. Yeah. Yeah. So a uh, general rule of thumb that you've kind of outlined is – book at the 11 month window and then see what happens at seven months. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you should always book your home resort at the 11 month window. Um, unless, unless you're, it's like completely not even where you're planning on going, yeah. <laughs> but if you're going to Disney world and your home resort is a Disney world resort, you know, you definitely book it at 11 months. And then at the seven month window, that's when you can look to modify your stay uh, without actually, you know, losing the stay you have. You can just simply modify it and, and, you know, possibly find something that's going to give you the best shot at, you know, obviously getting what you want. 
um, is booking online 8 a.m. at the 11 month window. Uh, if you are trying to get something at the seven month window, it's the same thing. You want to be there. You want to be online at 8 a.m. at the seven month window, ready to modify that stay or ready to book, you know, whatever you're trying to get uh, that's not your home resort. Well, and you're you're planning that big Disney vacation. And, and, you know, Jeff, I know you've been there because, you know, you recently moved here, but you plan that big Disney vacation and you have to you know, you, you kind of lock in when you're going to go far in advance. And so you've got to make sure that you've got that room, especially if you're traveling with, you know, multiple family members or multiple families. Like, and so it's like lock it in and then you can be more flexible, you know, down the road. Like that's, that's my general experience. Yeah. I tend to agree. You know, it's, you, you always want something, you can change it if you find something better, but it's best to have something in the bag. Now, Panda, like you're the phrase security blanket. So your home resort is your security blanket. So I tell people all the time, like book it. Maybe you don't want to stay at Saratoga or you don't want to stay at Old Key West this trip. It doesn't matter. Just book your dates. And then like you guys said too, at that seven month window is when the fun starts, right? Because then you can go online saying, I don't know, I already got this. So I already have my room that I needed for my dates of when my flight is, but let me see what's available. And then you start talking to the friends and the family. Hey, it looks like we could move over to the poly or we could move over to this resort or that resort. So yeah, just always book your home resort. Now, Panda, I know we've talked about this before. You know, you you typically are a little bit more flexible, last minute stays, that kind of stuff. Have you utilized the, the seven to 11 month window though for anything specific with your family or anything? Never. I just don't plan that far in advance for that kind of stuff. But I've, I've been lucky because I, I basically let the resorts dictate where I'm going because I'll say, you know, I want to go at this time and I'll look around and I'll always find something. When we get to Riviera, um, at the end of this month, I'm going to go to one of those tower rooms and I'll have, it's really interesting to me because I found the, the cheapest, I think it was like maybe 14 points for a night. Mm -hmm. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that and what I plan to do with that and how I got it. It was pretty easy. And then it looks like the last that you kind of had on here, um, Less nights are easier to get. Consider a split stay to lessen what you need at each resort. And that yeah. kind of goes hand in hand with what, what Panda just kind of said. Yeah, obviously the the least amount of nights that you need, the easier it is, right? It's always easy to pick up like one or two nights. Picking up a whole week somewhere, especially somewhere that isn't your home resort, is going to be a little more difficult. So if you are looking to possibly stay at a different resort and you have a long stay, it might be smart when you book your home resort to book it in two chunks, right? So let's say it's seven nights, book a four night and then a three night. And then you can try to modify just one of those um, at a time. And you you could end up with different resorts, but split days can be really fun. Uh, you know, you get different scenery, you get a fresh room, uh, you can move your resort around and you could, you know, focus on those parks. So if you're staying at Bay Lake or around the monorail, maybe you focus on Magic Kingdom then. If you're staying Epcot area next and you focus on, up caught in Hollywood studios or, or, you know, whatever. Uh, and then one last thing that, that you skipped over, uh, you should always, if, if you look for something and it's not there and you're within the booking range, you should always set wait list and you should yes. also do what we call stalking the system, which we talked about that on our vocabulary show, but basically you just check regularly throughout the day, depending on how dedicated you are. It could be once a day, it could be a few times a day and check to see, you know, if that opens up for you. So let's go. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Just, to, just to go to Amy's point, uh, in May, I had BLT, Bay Lake Tower. Uh, I think I had, uh, not Lagoon View, I had the other side, the Bay View. Mm -hmm. And I wanted 4th of July to see the fireworks. So I waitlisted, uh, you know, Tower Room, uh, Park View. And sure enough, it came through. So yeah. you would think... Never. You're never going to get 4th of July, you know, tower, yeah. theme park view. You get, I got it for two that's, nights. That's a very hard one to get on a very hard date to get it. So, yeah. That, yeah, for sure. Congratulations. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, amazing. That's awesome. I, I, I'm thinking a lot of people thought not to waitlist it because the chances of getting it are none. Yeah. So the people that did, pro you know, some of them got lucky like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just you're even considering out there that the 4th of July is my birthday. So oh. you know what room number you're in, I'll be knocking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that this Not year this or year. that was last year? I had it. I had it. I had it. I know. I just teased it. It was anyway. last year. I should try. I should try again. The expectation is set. Do it again. Um, I didn't know your birthday was the 4th of July. You get the best yeah. fireworks yeah. on your birthday, too. True. We celebrate you, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks for that. 
let's let's look a little bit into each resort now now that we've we've talked about this why did derek just show us a bucket hat again <laughs> sure. i was giving him a hat for for his birthday because i i appreciate it i have uh, two already <laughs> <laughs> derek has a million of these at home and, and just, just i'm gonna keeps... wear it for one of our shows you Flip should on. Paul moves the grass in his. I do. Yeah. It's a it's a great grass <laughs> hat. It's one of those like you can wet it and then wring it out. Yeah. And it's like a cooling hat. Um, uh, Derek, did everyone at your house get one for Christmas this year? Like Yes, yes. Soggy in the lobby. That is what he's <laughs> when, when Paul puts his on and gets ready to mow the grass, he officially transforms into Florida man. So uh, <laughs> just so it. you know. Like cut off t shirt, yeah. bucket Hold hat. Up. Pull the black socks up to the knees. He slips into some sandals. Oh, yeah, I could see it. <laughs> Can I give somebody just a really quick tip before you jump into each resort? Anything know- to get us off this topic, please. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because I know we got some friends that are kind of newer DVC members, and they didn't realize that this was a thing. So we were talking about it the other night. When you go and, like, let's say you've, you've looked at a week in the, um, I want to say this week at Boardwalk, and it says, sorry, no rooms are available. But if you click on the month, like you, the drop down that shows the month and it shows which yep. days are available. Make sure you do that because sometimes it's only one night that's not available. So book your, like Amy was saying, book your first four or five nights and the ones after wait list that one in the middle because one night's a much easier one to wait list than three weekend nights, for example. So make sure you're looking at the calendar and seeing that it's actually not available for the whole time because if it's one or two nights, that's a much easier grab. Right. I, I, Jeff, me- you're right. I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, you're fine. It took me a long time to realize that you can also just modify the dates right there by clicking on that calendar. Yeah. I didn't know that for probably three years. <laughs> I'm pretty amazed at the power they've given us in the DVC you know, website when it works. Mm-hmm. So the, the thing I did with the, t- if we just go to Riviera, those ta- there's tower rooms. They're like not even real rooms. There's no real bed. It's just pulled down. It's tiny but they're very little points and I wanted to get one. So I put in staying from March 1st to March 31st, just like Jeff said, knowing I'm not going to get, I I didn't want a month worth of rooms, but that (laughs) opened up the calendar for me to look at March to say, ah, there's a night that's available and just grab the night that I wanted. Again, Mm -hmm. I live here. It's flexible. I get it. Not everyone can do that, but if you can, it's a great, it's a great tool. Yeah. If if you're trying to build a vacation around an event, let's say food and wine or flower and garden, and you do have, um, even if you're not local and you have flexibility, you're like, I don't care when I go, I want to go and I want to stay here, boardwalk because it's close to Epcot. Then, you know, by, by searching that broader date range, uh, yeah. and pulling up that calendar, that's really going to show you any availability that, that, that could exist out there. And, um, that's a, that's a great tip, Jeff, for sure. So, uh, first up on our resorts list, animal kingdom. And uh, in terms of the hardest rooms to book at Animal Kingdom, we've got down the club and value level rooms, which I will I will put a caveat on that and say those are the hardest rooms of all of DVC probably to book. Yeah, I don't. Does anybody know how many club level rooms there are? It's such a small amount. A handful. I I thought it was like eight or ten or something. Yeah, like six. They're only a jumbo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I could ask Tatum. That concierge is fantastic. Yeah, and then it the is. same thing. The yeah. same thing with uh, and the other thing about Animal Kingdom Club level is it's the only club level DVC that there is. Yep. So yeah. you know it's very popular. It's a very good value for the points um, compared to if you were buying club level hotel, you know, cash. So and it's, there's so few rooms, so those go very very quickly. Um, and, uh, the value rooms are the same. There's like 10 of them. I think someone correct me if you know, uh, I think there's like 10 sets of like 10 studios and then 10 one bedrooms that can also be a two bedroom lock off. Um, I might, that number might be off by a little bit, but it's it's a small amount. You hear value too. And people think that they're going to be incredibly different than the other properties. We're talking about maybe a couple square feet less. Like they're, they're very like it's an unnoticeable amount yeah and sometimes you can even get a savannah view you know some of them are savannah view some of them are pole view and then actually the least amount of them are our parking lot view which we we got when we played (laughs) value roulette and the real reason they're they're 
their kind of labeled value is I think just based off of the location and based off of not wanting to convert some of the yeah. standard hotel rooms that they had. It just made more sense mm -hmm. for this area of the building to basically mm -hmm. fall into that value category. But yes. um, they are some Any, of the hardest. Anybody I, know what the <clears throat> easiest category or the most like plentiful category at Animal Kingdom would be? <laughs> Derek, for a bucket hat, go. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Savannah View. <laughs> get, get closer. I forgot that we gave you guys the... <laughs> You are right, though. There are way more Savannah views than any any inventory at Animal Kingdom. So those are going to be your easiest if you're trying to get, you know, if you're just trying to get in there or wait list or. Yeah, this is the this is the next resort's the one that blows me away. Hardest to get at Disney's Boardwalk Villas, uh, standard view or boardwalk view, but easiest to get is the pool garden view. Um, I love the pool garden view. Like I know I always take a gamble with it, but I absolutely love it. He says that as someone who has only ever had a pool garden view over Village Green. That is true. On the basically where he can see the boardwalk. I request it every time. And we've gotten oh. it every time. Yeah, we, then, we failed at roulette on that one. Yeah. We, then we you've never garden. survived. If you've never survived having a pool garden view of the creepy clown slide, boy, I tell you, there's like <laughs> the spaghetti O'Hare. Used to have those <laughs> at night, the eyes would glow up at night and sitting outside. It was crazy. <laughs> well, uh, we've, no, tried clown. we've tried we've tried twice to play a pool garden view roulette, and the first time we were on the first floor at the pool. So, like mm. everybody is walking past our room on the way to the pool, soggy and on their way to the lobby. <laughs> soggy in the lobby. <laughs> the second time we were on the third floor, and there was this giant tree. There was no view. It was just a tree with kind of a little bit of hazy Tower of Terror in the distance. I've heard of that but view. That, that tree was full of birds <laughs> and at 6 a.m. Oh, man. The uh, One of the best that I've seen recently over on the DC <laughs> Fan Facebook group was uh, a boardwalk view. And it was a first floor, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And it was right next to the preview center. Mm, I would hear that. But wait, it gets better. Because they took a picture and the food truck that are that are that are oh, now coming, the oh food no. truck parked oh. right in front of their room. I would so. ask for a new room or give awesome. me give me my points to to so, a standard. Give me I'm not quite sure that that <laughs> equates to a boardwalk right. view. Oh, what a shame! I didn't even think about the food truck blocking yep. the view of some of those first floor rooms. Although I, any any first floor situation, I'm not a fan of. Yeah, same. We used to always request when we used to stay at the boardwalk and book, you know, far out because we flew down from Chicago is we it used to be a hike and app. And I know it still is. But those rooms all the way <laughs> near the crest of the wave side yep. right next to Jelly Rolls mm -hmm. have it's a walk and a half. Like, you know, you might have to get a room <laughs> just to sleep halfway before you get to your actual. <laughs> but it's so worth it because those mm -hmm. views. You see everything. You see the entire span of the whole entire boardwalk. You see fireworks every single night. So yeah. they all ended in zero zero one. That I yeah. do remember. And you can see Spaceship Earth from from yeah. those rooms as well. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Beach Club. Um, hardest to get at Beach Club are studios historically. <laughs> Pretty much everything. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like everything <laughs> here. Um, easiest to get one bedrooms, although you wrote still difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but Beach Club is just such a small resort that it's like, if you don't book at 11 months, you you are playing roulette at that, at that time. It is very hard. Although our good friend Mandy, um, she... She pieced together a good right, stay recently. but she pieced it together literally one night at a time. One night at so. a time, stalking the system, checking mm -hmm. day in, day out, you know. Yeah. Um, but it happened. It, it can happen. So right. there, there is hope. And we have stayed and at Beach Club several times, but they've all been like single to two night, four night max days. You know what I mean? Yep. And um, I've heard people, people have complained to that have stayed at the beach club, obviously not about the location because mm -hmm. it's perfect or not about the pool, but it's always like, yeah, we got a bad room. You know, we had a horrible view. I don't think there's good views at the beach club. <gasps> no, I don't think so either. Where, where the resort is built, you're literally going to sit on your patio and, and watch people mm -hmm. walk by like on their way to the park. So don't feel yeah. bad if, if you don't get a good view at the beach club because there are none. 
Yeah. I remember one of our first beach club stays. We, we got we, the coveted view. We we got a coveted view, but it was also <laughs> through a forest. Oh no, you're thinking the the first day we ever had, we got the view where you can see like the I think is it the land pavilion? Well, the, yeah, or, but it was there like was a, no, there was a crane right in oh, front of it. Oh, it was a crane. I forget it about a, that. It was a construction crane. But it's also like even though it's like the perfect view at that resort, it's also. You, you you go into it and you're like, this is great. I could see Epcot. I'll see fireworks. And it's like, you see like one spark come up over something every five minutes. Yeah, we've watched fireworks. <clears throat> but it's so, it's, it's so thrilling to sit there for five minutes. Oh, there's one. Like, yeah. <laughs> Another thing about Beach Club too, at least the times that I've stayed there, I don't know what it is, but you know, last episode we talked about Hilton Head and how spacious the balconies are. Mm, yeah. balconies the beach club are like this big yeah. Yeah. there's no rocking chair there's i don't know i didn't i i don't like it. oh beach club is like balcony roulette where you yes. might get so like weird. this weird uh you know isosceles shaped balcony <laughs> there's a word you didn't expect to hear today you, ladies isosceles. and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> or you might get a little square like you're right it's what, just so random do you remember on our uh, one of our our I think it was my birthday trip or your birthday trip to Beach Club. We stayed in a room and we looked down. This is also what's weird about it is we were yeah. in like a very tiny balcony, but we were, if we looked straight down, there were giant balconies below us. So like we were literally standing above people if they were on their balcony. Yeah. It was but a very there were weird two, spot. we were on a corner and there were two balconies, but then there was this weird area where it was like a triangle yeah. of nothingness, but neither balcony could get to it. Yeah, it was. And like- so it was like a timeout zone, I felt like, <laughs> in between the two balconies. I don't like. I, what, yeah, I don't know why they didn't open what, that up. Why didn't they open that up to one of the sides? Like, I I, it makes no sense unless they were like, oh, that's going to be the place where the person above you spits or something. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like, But uh, yeah, Beach Club's weird. Um, that's a new then, member line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to lump the next two together because, you know, they kind of fall into the same categories. Copper Creek, Boulder Ridge, both at Wilderness Lodge. Hardest to get at those properties are going to be studios. Easiest to get are going to be one bedrooms. Um, and I think I, I'll, I'll take that a step further with Copper Creek and I say, even say cabin. well, Copper, no, Copper Creek in general, just <laughs> extremely hard for yeah. both studios. I would even say one bedroom, two bedroom because of yeah. what the cabins have done to mm-hmm. that resort. Right. Yeah. I don't think that the cabins are too, too hard to get except during like popular times just yes. because they cost so much and points. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people kind of stay away from those. And that's what's put the stress, I think, on the, on the other properties mm-hmm. there is, as you know. The, the studios, the one bedrooms, two bedrooms. That's why everyone bought Copper Creek, um, except for the rare few that did buy for the cabins. Yeah. But, um, you know, the the cabins are what have kind of caused the biggest issue there. And then Boulder Ridge, beautiful property, recently refurbished. Um, the studios look great. The one we the one bedrooms look great. You know, all of, all of those are, are amazing. But they fall into what would be kind of the standard when it comes to, you know, what we're seeing across the board with availability in, in – in, in kind of what the what the rooms are doing. So. Uh, next on the list, uh, Grand Floridian. And uh, it's interesting, you didn't go by room type here. You kind of went by um, the original buildings. So hardest to get are the original villas at the Grand Floridian, so the original building. And the easiest to get are the new resort studios as our dogs decide it's playtime. <laughs> Hermes' favorite toy is this Pink pony. This pink pony that came in a bark box that I thought we were going to give to our friend's dog, Abby, but he likes it so much. So, so Paul's going to have to take it off him because he's squeaking it. Oh, <laughs> the pink no. pony. <laughs> There's pink oh, pony. Sorry, pink, give him we'll pink back pony. <laughs> Does he want a bucket hat? If I can give him a bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Grand Floridian. Basically, Grand Floridian used to be so hard to book. Do you guys remember before they opened Big Pine Key how difficult it was? And I remember that's why we bought points there and it was it was so hard. And then they opened up Big Pine Key and I don't it's not as hard anymore to get into Grand Floridian, but it is hard to get into those original villas. And that's the the Lux Studios, the one bedrooms, the two bedrooms and the the three bedroom mm-hmm. Grand Villas. <laughs> Um, but the resort studios are definitely a lot easier easier to get now. 
Yeah, because I mean, you have tens of thousands of, if not more, points that mm -hmm. are now floating around for people that are competing with just that original building yeah. for the one bedrooms, for the two bedrooms, for the three bedroom. Studios are not that hard to come by, and I prefer the new tower ones, you know, way better than the original building just because of the location and all that. But you're still dealing with people that bought the Grand Floridian in that mm -hmm. second phase that said, we only want one yeah. bedroom, we only want two bedrooms, but yeah. that building itself didn't get any bigger. So it still stayed the same price as when it was sold out. So mm -hmm. Derek, I will take everything you just said about the Grand Floridian and actually transfer it to our next resort, which is the Polynesian, because I think we're going to run into the same problem there. Amy, you marked out on here. It's pretty easy in most situations to get the studio or the bungalows yeah, currently because it pretty much is all studios and yeah. then the bungalows are just so high in points that you know unless you got them <laughs> you don't get it so yeah but that's going to change if uh, you know the, this new resort come you know the new tower comes on and there's one bedrooms and there's two bedrooms then all of these people that have stayed in studios all these years are going to say, oh, I want I want into the one bedrooms. I want into the two bedrooms. And so you're going to run into the same exact problem that we're seeing over at, at Grand Floridian, which is everyone's fighting over those one and two bedrooms, which for mm -hmm. me, I'm fine with. You know, I love studios. There's going to be some of the, you know, resort studio or tower studio type concepts in this resort as well. So those will be available probably just as hard to get as Panda has said, you know, the, uh, the tower studio at Riviera was as hard to get for him, but, um, you know, Hey, more studios for us. And I don't know if anyone will stay in the bungalows at that point. Um, those will, those will always be up for grabs. I have a quick question. Does Copper Creek or Boulder Ridge have grand villas? Or is uh, it just a great bungalows? question. Copper Creek Copper does Creek. have grand villas, yes. Boulder Ridge and beach club do not. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering if, if Polly, because of the bungalows, we're going to have a grand villa as well. So I, I, it, it looks like it, it does look like yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of, the, the overall design of that tower mimics a lot of what they did with Disneyland hotel. Mm -hmm. And so okay. I think we're going to see maybe two, <laughs> two. three, four, you know, very, very Let's small you, number. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, those top two floors or so are going to have those grand villas and, um, cool. they're only going to do that to boost what they can sell points wise of that resort. That's, that's really where that, you know, the grand villas, when you look at a point chart as a whole, it makes up the total number of points per day, per year for each, each room in the building. And what is the best opportunity? Well, we, you know, we know it's the grand villas. We've seen it with Polynesian and, and Copper Creek. What they did was they inflated those charts by the bungalows and the cabins. And so, um, they, they need something to eat up some points so that they can sell some more and, and, and recoup the cost of building that resort. So that's what we'll probably see there. Um, um, Jeff, just to answer your question too, a refurbished Copper Creek Grand Villa, I think is like the flagship Grand Villa because it's different than all the others. Mm -hmm. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Next on our list, continuing around the monorail loop, we're back to Bay Lake Tower, um, Amy's favorite. Um, I just love it. It's not my favorite, but I do love it. <laughs> hardest to get All there. All haters. Hardest to get there. Standard or theme park view, unless you're Panda and you luck out on that July 4th date. Um, and then the easiest to get is the lake view. Yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, out of all of the resorts, I think that we've talked about, if you're punting and have to settle for a lake view at Bay Lake Tower, that's not a bad settle no. like that. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. beautiful view, mm -hmm. especially because if you can, if if you want to, you can just hop in the elevator and go up to the observation deck, uh, or go to top of the world lounge mm -hmm. and you can see the fireworks from there. So you've got the same. Yeah. And Lakeview, obviously it's cause it has the most inventory at Bay Lake, but, uh, some of the Lakeview is on the inside of the horseshoe facing Bay Lake. And some of them are actually on the other side. So some, some lake views do have theme park views. Yeah. So, yeah. But that, but that theme park view, like during the day, which is what I tell people all too all the time. Like, don't be sad if you don't get it, because during the day it's almost like a parking lot view, just because <laughs> you see it all the way to like the Magic Kingdom. It's parking lot, parking lot. Parking. At night, it's really, really pretty. But I just don't think it's worth the points. I, I would rather get a lake it's, view. That's a beautiful for, scene. For me though, Derek, it's the sounds. I'm telling you, there's something about hearing the ooh and hearing the haunted mansion. You can hear the howls. Yeah. From the, your balcony. And there's just something magical about that whole spot. 
Good point. I've never listened that intently that I could hear Haunted Mansion. Uh, you next can't time. hear the Haunted, Haunted Mansion. Mansion. We're hearing the next door neighbors. <laughs> no, no, I swear you could hear the Haunted Mansion. You could hear the ferry boats, obviously. You just there's certain sounds of the of the lagoon that are just ah. Yeah. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> um when it comes to crazy point charts and views and the most irregular thing we've ever seen. I have to put it on our next resort, which is Riviera uh, for Riviera, the hardest to get unless you're Panda um, tower studios or anything. Well, no, but that you, is you a, heard how I got it. It wasn't special. I yeah, looked at yeah. a month yeah. you know, and said, okay, I'll go this day. Yeah. Um, we know. But so the, the tower studios, very hard to get very limited number of those available, but standard view is very difficult to get. And this this is, I think, twofold. One, because it's cheaper. And two, because it actually faces a park. Mm-hmm. Like, it actually faces fireworks in most sc- scenarios. Um, whereas the preferred view is what I call the splash pad view or the, um, the kind of lake view. Um, and the point charts for those are outrageous. So most, I mean, Panda, you're, you're our resident Riviera owner. Would you book a preferred view knowing what those cost per night with the points versus a standard view when you can see Epcot and see fireworks? I'd go for standard first, but I've had the preferred view and I've had, you know, the the lake that they have out there and the gondolas and it looks nice. It's nice. (laughs) It's nice. It is nice. It's peaceful. It is nice if you get that view we we were over the splash pad but yeah we had the kids even the parking lot view i didn't mind i don't mind it at the revere everything seems nice there to me <laughs> we we I rode out hurricane it. ian facing the parking lot and that was a that was a good time because we just watched this guy's jeep fill up with water because he didn't have a top on it so that was pretty uh, great we just filmed it like in time lapse it was awesome not for him but for that's, us that's pretty <laughs> we need, cool we need this video jeff i do we, need to see it that's, pa- really, that's patreon content you really want yeah. to see the video <laughs> and and especially jeff's probably commentary and, the, and reactions in the background of it oh it's a time lapse so i don't all think right. you get a whole no, it'll, be, it. it'll be squeaky and fast but you'll still get it so yeah <laughs> he's gonna pay the price for not having a roof <laughs> Uh, rounding out the Walt Disney World properties, Old Key West, hardest, near hospitality house, easiest, r- the regular booking category. Um, you know, uh, agree there's, what, two buildings that are the near hospitality house, I, I believe? no clue. It's um, not very many. <laughs> two or three buildings that are categorized as near hospitality house, which is near the, the central location. So people, there's no difference in points. Yeah. Um, so most people try to book those first. Wait, they don't. Ch- they don't charge extra points like surge pricing to be near no. hospitality. Yeah, <laughs> no. Ac- so actually, no, I think Derek might be able to shed more light on this. I think this was just reactionary to them. I don't think this is actually how they originally came. No, no. on. No. no, no. This is all reactionary, right? So it's whenever you talk about the point charts, it's always the <laughs> phrase reallocation. So that's what legally it's called is reallocation because every resort has a total number of vacation club points assigned to it. That total number can never, ever increase, just like we said. So they can move stuff around like we've talked about. So, you know, that early December, that time frame, and now might be a couple more points a night than maybe during the summers less. But I think that truly, and I could probably find out for sure, but I think when they revised it, Obviously, the total number of points never changed, but they just had so many people requesting that we want to be near Hospitality House that they just made it it, it, its own booking place. So, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that was always my general impression is so many people, you know, whether it be mobility related, you know, you name it, um, but they want to be closer to the amenities of the resort. And so it was just easier for them rather than to have this onslaught of a million requests for that. Let's make it its own booking category and uh, and make it easy. But Old Key West, on the whole, fairly easy to get into because it is one of the uh, one of the larger properties, <clears throat> and by far the largest property at Walt Disney World when it comes to Disney Vacation Club, uh, Saratoga Springs. Um, hardest, um, you wrote most are easy. That is true. <laughs> uh, but studios and grand villas will go first in the standard category, right? Just because it's less points. Yep. Standard usually goes first, even though it's. Usually easy, but you know, there. If you're booking last minutes, sometimes Saratoga is gone. So yep. uh, usually, if if it pops up, what we normally will see is like a preferred, you know, be more expensive points. Uh, 
but yeah, not much to say there. <laughs> and same thing there. Preferred's going to be a little bit closer to the amenities and a little bit closer to Disney Springs and a lot of those elements too. So um, more points equals easier to get in most. I, I think that's probably the general theme the of the show. The takeaway. Yeah. Uh, uh, over the years. Uh, if we move uh, real quick, just to finish this off to some of the properties that are outside of Walt Disney World. Um, Alani is a big one that a lot of people question. So we have a lot of owners that are Walt Disney World DVC owners that are like, I want to go to Alani. I want to do an Alani vacation. Um, you know, what are the odds of me getting in seven months? I don't know. Derek, you probably get that question just as much as we do. A lot. Yeah. 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 And, and so, so the odds are pretty good. It's just during the busier times of year, especially maybe if you want like an ocean view during Christmas week might be a little bit hard at seven months out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in general though, ocean view can be one of the easier categories mm -hmm. to get off season, uh, just again, because of the point charts and, and because mm -hmm. of the cost it is to have that view. Right. And the hardest are those hotel rooms. And I, I've heard it, and I don't know if this is true or not, but those came about cause there's only like what, six of them. It's, it's some random, really small number. It's like the value. They're very yeah. cheap on points. They're just, they're hotel rooms. And, uh, I always heard that they had taken out a grand villa to put in Ama Ama, or is it is that what the name of the mm -hmm. Ama Ama, which is the specialty, you know, resort or the specialty restaurant. And because they did that for the hotel, the resort, the hotel resort had to give something back to DVC. So they gave them a handful of hotel rooms to make up for that loss of that grand villa. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have like six random hotel rooms in the DVC inventory. Interesting. Interesting. I right. knew it. So they are the cheapest on points. They go very quickly by owners. And then then standard view is going to go next. Um, but if I'm going clear to Hawaii and flying for 11 hours, ocean I'm view. going to an ocean view. <laughs> <laughs> so. Unless you get sick and then you settle for whatever room you can get. <laughs> uh, we still can see the ocean. but. <laughs> Although, pro tip, if you get the garden view, you can often see the uh, luau from your, from your room. So, that is true. Then you don't have to pay $179 or whatever it is. <laughs> but nobody will throw you up crazy. food. I love right. that it's Jeff's like, equation of watching the luau from his balcony is the same as being there drinking and eating. Like, are you stealing <laughs> from it? He's like, instead of spending $179, just sit and watch the people. No, yeah. Go get the pizza from downstairs, bring up, have a way better meal, and still see the luau. That's you true. You still get the entertainment. The Especially if you have a two-bedroom and friends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> also off property we i think we touched on a lot of this in our hilton head show and also in our previous Vero beach talks um so both of these i kind of think fall into the same uh realm which is that Vero beach and hilton head uh peak season that's going to be your hardest to get these these different properties you know perfect summer vacation season you know, it's going to be hard to go mm, to spring the beach. break, spring break. Mm -hmm. um, easiest is going to be off season when most of us have, have historically gone to some of these properties at, at Vero when Amy and I recently went to Hilton Head. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and Derek um, will speak quickly to Vero Beach. Those three bedroom beach cottages, boy, and, and the in rooms actually also, mm -hmm. they are they are the go to and, and, and ones that most people want at Vero. But I think unless you own there, they're pretty hard to get. People will, and our very own uh, Webmaster Doc recently bought some Vero Peach points for that exact same reason, because he wants to get the beach cottage, not every year, but maybe every other year, because there's not many of them. And the in-rooms, I think, are a way better use of points than the studios. I think the mm -hmm. location in yep. that main building at Vero with the two queen beds in it, you still have a mini fridge, you still have you know the microwave, so you still have that, but it's in a much better location and a great use of points. I have gotten a standard view, which we just did in December, but I was able to see the ocean if you kind of look over this way and stand on your tippy toes and all that. So even a regular standard view in the in-room is pretty, you know, so yeah, you, you can't go wrong either way. Heading to the West Coast, Grand Californian Disneyland Villas. For the Grand Californian, you wrote down hardest to get anything. In my <laughs> everything. <laughs> but everything. But especially anything. studios and Grand Villas because there's only two Grand Villas. Yeah. Studios and Grand Villas or go three. first. Um, they go at about, you know, 8.01 a.m. And then 8.02 <laughs> a.m. The one bedrooms go and then there's nothing left. And 
Um, you know, it Grand California is just you've got to own there to get in. That is that has historically been the rule. There's been the off off scenario where we're we're testament to that where we mm-hmm. we somehow got a studio a studio um and so it, again For if you Fortnite. stock the system and yeah. and you kind of pay attention to what's going on but i did try and fail multiple mornings so we had to be flexible you know what i mean tried and failed try the next morning and failed try the next, and so our dates moved as the time moved so then we finally yeah, got it got to got to be <laughs> flexible and then disneyland villas so far from what we've seen the easiest to get are those preferred view rooms which make up a lot of the resort they've mm-hmm. they've labeled a lot of that, that property the, the preferred view studio and then hardest grand villas there's two when they when they first opened there was one because the second mm-hmm. one wasn't ready um uh, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, the duo studios, so like the tower studio type concepts there, and then those uh, elusive garden studios that are down in the pool area, which don't even attract me. Like I, I think it's cool that they're like off to the side, but I don't like that. Like, they sit so low. They sit so low, and they're you're probably right there loud and, from the pool. Yeah, yeah, like when we were there, I felt like I could look up at them and scream at the people on the second balcony yeah, and just have a, a, have a conversation with them. So like, yeah, the privacy is 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 little to none, but. Overall, in that hmm. resort, the bigger problems with you know no balconies on some of the some of the main rooms and stuff like that. So, uh, but you know it'll be interesting to continue to watch um, the Disneyland villas as they sell more and we, as we see what the availability does there. Um, if you guys had to guess with new properties coming down the road, so we talked about Polly a little bit in its own right. The Polly Tower, though, if you think about the tower specifically, what is it? What is going to be hard to get at the tower? Uh, can I go? Yeah, for a bucket <laughs> hat. Go. Yeah, I literally was just going to bring this up and ask because I know obviously we're all speculating at, at this point, but I'm sitting here thinking about it and thinking how many people love, and I still cannot get over the fact that there's one DVC resort with a concierge level that I think the Polynesian has always been famous for their concierge level. I think it's yep. what, like King Kamehameha Club or something mm, like that. Enough. It seems to me like it would be such an absolute no-brainer to include a concierge level club as part of the new Polynesian mm-hmm. tower. You don't have to have many rooms, but my God, is it enticing for people to look to say, okay, God, there's a point chart and there's going to be a lounge and everything else that's there. So I would personally love to see that. I think the point chart itself is going to rival the Grand Floridian one. So I think the one bedrooms are going to be pretty similar to the two bedrooms and the three bedrooms and whatnot. But man, that'd be awesome if they could add a concierge level. That would be cool. Yeah. Now, I'm, now, now I'm just going to be hoping for the next six months until we learn yeah, something. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of, of that. that dream. Yeah, and if this pans that'd be out, a good move. If, the, if this pans out, this show will go down in history as <laughs> Derek, the future teller. But you're right, exactly. like <laughs> Grand Destino, like top floor, like Grand Destino, yeah. lounge that you can see the park. Yeah. Mm. People pay an insane amount of money for the original hotel rooms at the Polynesian Hotel to be part of that concierge level. And I'm talking, I hear stories mm-hmm. all the time from people that started going there in the 70s. They've never stayed anywhere else but concierge level at the Polynesian. And if you've ever seen that lounge, it's kind of got the two-story mm-hmm. huge windows yeah. that look the whole yeah, entire Yeah, I look up in it from time to time. Oh, it'd be <laughs> awesome if they could do that. They'd be printing That's, money. I used, to, I used to stay there for nine nights a year when I lived back in New York. And I would always get the Tonga building with the, with the concierge. It was great. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do we think it was one $100, $170 hard? a night. Because <laughs> I, I was a travel agent. That was my discount, $170 yeah. a night. Oh, my God. Do we think that because of the way the poly is designed that the one bedrooms actually might be harder here? Because we already have so many studios. Mm-hmm. And if they add a bunch more studios, like sure. people that want to stay at the poly don't because there isn't a room that's big enough for their family. Oh, there so, are yeah. going to be studios also in the tower? I thought I'm the just tower guessing. was just... I'm, I would assume oh. so, yeah. Yeah, based oh. off of based off some of the blueprints we've seen, there will definitely be lock offs at least, and and you know maybe some some dedicated and the duo or the tower type studios as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff, my thought on that is Polly's such a weird one because it does. I feel like Polly does attract some of the same clientele that one bedrooms do because of how the bathroom layout is. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. the um, the room is. A little bit bigger. It's one of the bigger studios, I think, on property. 
you have the split bathroom concept. So there's a little bit more room. Now, are people going to obviously want a one bedroom over that? Yes. Like, so I, I completely agree that, you know, the one bedrooms there are going to be very difficult to get, um, as are the two, the two bedrooms. But I do wonder like, what does it do for the, the resort as a whole? Because like, it's like the, the standard, the, the real, the real comparison I think is going to be looking at what they do with the studios in that tower compared to the existing studios, the existing long yeah. houses, like, um, when we compare the split bathroom concepts and everything. So, um, what, what kind of space is there between those two and how do those two categories maybe rival each other? So I'd be, I'd, I'd be totally fine if they made the studios in the new tower, the same as the ones like at the grand Floridian, right? So you have your regular studios that you can get that have already been there, but, but then if you want two dedicated queen beds, you know, then perfect. Then I got to oh, yeah. stay in the tower. You know, that's, that's how I would separate it, but they don't pay me for yeah. that. Last but not least on the list, the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. Now, do we think the one bedroom cabins or the one bedroom cabins are going to be harder to book at that property? I meant seasons for this one. <laughs> yeah, Christmas I got and, nothing else. and Halloween are going to be hard. Yeah. I think they're going to have to give them away the rest of the year. I, that's my <laughs> prediction. I don't think these are going to do as well as anybody else thinks. So that's I'm, I'm going to die on that hill. You heard it here first. <laughs> I hope Jeff is right. Easier for us to book. Right? Yeah. They'll, Amy, they'll Amy. get so desperate, they'll let you have another dog. <laughs> and that's the hill she's going to die on. So <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You'll well, have a whole uh, loop to yourself. Just Jeff Haslam in a whole entire loop. He's going to be the only one staying there. I love it. Well, hopefully we've taught you a thing or two about using your points this show and at least given you some ideas. We know we've, we've gotten a lot of questions from members um, over, over the time of just, you know, can I get in here? What are the odds of me getting in here? And that's a big question when people are looking at buying a, a contract too, is like, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Is it going to work out? And I think that's a great question to ask. And, and those people that think on that level when they are making that purchase um, are kind of getting ahead of the game um, rather than um, I think a lot of people buy direct, you know, instinctively, emotionally when they when they're at the parks and then they have absolutely no clue what they just got into. Um, and so they don't realize that what they were sold on in those in, in that in that presentation is actually pretty hard to get nine times out of ten. And so, um, you know, coming into it with a game plan, coming into it, knowing some of this information about what the availability is like at those properties can give you a, a step up and uh, hopefully make that vacation that you're planning for you and your family a little bit easier for you to get. And as we've said, if you can be flexible, I think that's the number one thing is um, maybe when you have those family conversations, um, kind of not necessarily put it into, hey, we want a vacation June 7th through the 12th. How about, Hey, we want a vacation in June. Like yeah. if you can, if you can kind of be a little bit more flexible, it's going to really open up the opportunities that you have available to you. And then as always planning, you know, 12 months in advance so that you're ready at 8 AM on, on the 11 month window day, uh, so that you can book what you need and then maybe play the game a little bit as we get closer to zero seven month window wait list in stock wait list in stock <laughs> and on that note that's gonna do it for this episode of the dvc show we hope you all enjoyed it and we will see you all next monday